Uh-oh, I think I'm officially in a sticky situation. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. It is time for the most anticipated video series um, that I've ever had in this shop. This is going to be a lot of fun. We are doing the glue test. Now I'm gonna split this up into two different videos uh, because I know this is going to create a lot of confusion and a lot of questions because I am attempting to do the most comprehensive and the most scientific study of glue on YouTube. Now, that being said, um, there are a ton of great YouTube videos out there about glue tests. Matthias Wendell, um, let's see, Lynn from Darwin Orver. There have been several good channels that have done really good information on it. Um, and I'm not knocking that, but and every time there's always like, mm, I'd love to take it one step further. So I want to actually dive into this and try and make it as scientific as I can. Now, that being said, using the word scientific is going to mean that I'm going to be held to a much higher standard. And... I'm going to fall short of that high standard, at least in my mind. I would like to do more, but I'm trying to do enough that I can get it into the video. So we're going to do as much as I can to try and verify the data that I'm collecting. Um, but it's probably going to take more work in the future, which means that there may be more glue videos coming out in the future. So in this video, I want to take you through the process and explain exactly how it's working. And this will give you a lot of ideas about uh, what I can do a little bit better maybe in the future to do it. Or before I actually go and complete all of the test, uh, maybe some ideas on how I can actually improve on what I'm doing here now. So I'd love to hear your questions, your comments, your ideas. Many of them I've already thought of. I'm just not going to talk about them because this video would be very, very long. But I want to go into a lot of the ideas about why I chose to do it this particular way. So let's talk about the contraption itself. This frame, the steel frame, was built by Wildman Tech, um, another channel I've done a couple other collabs with. Uh, he was the one who made the metal parts for some of my uh, wooden beam clamps. And if you haven't seen the video on that, um, he actually goes into the detail about making those, and I make the wooden parts. It was a really, really cool collaboration and still one of my favorite tools in the shop. Um, so he decided to do the collaboration with me on this, and he made the frame and sent it out to me and that is awesome because I don't have a welder. Um, I've done welding in the past but I don't have a welder to actually make it. So I want to say a huge thank you for uh, putting that together. Definitely check out his channel. I'll leave a link to that down in the description as well as the cards. Um, and if nothing else you've got to check out his work on the beam clamps and seeing how those came together. I'll leave a link to that video as well. Uh, but he's put this together so that we can actually do the testing because I didn't know how much force is this really going to take, so I've kind of overbuilt everything. So everything in this system is designed for at least one ton of pressure. Uh, the scale I have is rated for two tons, so 4,000 pounds of pressure. It's for either tension or compression. I have it currently wired up for compression, so it will give me a load rating on the compression. And here you can see the scale. I currently have it uh, set up for when I put the, the weight and all that on it, and it will go down to zero. Uh, but this I can actually put it in compression and it'll tell me I'm currently putting 40 pounds of pressure on here. Um, <laughs> so I, I can get a very, very good accurate idea. And the other thing is I can also put a hold on this so that it'll tell me what is my max pressure. So at any moment I can squeeze it a little bit farther and I, can, I know exactly what the pressure was at the break. I'm not trying to eyeball it and hope I catch the number with my eye. I wanted to make sure that was a, a, a solid number that I knew that it broke at this pressure. Now initially my idea was to do this and basically hang a wire on here and put some weights on it just to see how many weights it took to make it collapse. But that's really inaccurate. It's not a good way of measuring it because number one you have the amount of weight you put on there and number two your wire putting on here is putting the pressure on the block itself. And that really brings me to what I want to do in this, is I want to isolate the wood from the glue. And I want to actually break it on the glue joint rather than on the wood. Now in some of the tests I've done already, occasionally the wood will break, but because of the way I have this set up, the shear strength on here, everything is putting on the glue. I have this little block that goes on here, and this block has a perfectly smooth face that sits to the smooth face of the wood and the smooth face of the shear iron up here. So when this slides on, it's actually going to be shearing. It's supporting all the fibers of the wood here, and up on top, this is supporting all the fibers of the backing board, so that when it comes in here, as much pressure as possible is actually on the glue joint. And so that's why I really wanted to do this with the, uh, the piston. This also allows me to have an infinite amount of pressure, so I can slowly, slowly, slowly add pressure until it snaps, rather than having a jolt force of adding a new weight. 
I can increase the weight slowly and get a far more accurate measurement doing it this way. And so that's why I decided to do this rather than having a frame or having an old spring scale. This is far more accurate and gives me a closer idea to how this works together. I have a hole drilled on the top of this that sets into this bolt so that the bolt can then ride on the top of the, uh, on the, top of the jack. And then this can then sit on top of the frame there. Originally, I was going to have this screwed into the frame, um, but with the, the spacing came out, it's just easier to put this on top and slide them down to the pieces. And so this way, on each piece, I can lower the jack down. I wish I'd gotten one with the springs, but oh well. Um, I can slide it into place. I can put the frame on here, and then I can jack it up into place and shear that, and then this will give me an exact measurement of the pressure needed to shear this off. So each of these blocks of wood are three quarter by one inch, and I cut them all on a table saw so that I knew they were all precise. I used a fence so that they're all the exact same size. So, so each of these blocks of wood has three quarter of a square inch of contact surface. And that way I can do any math I need of, of 0.75 of a square inch. I can scale that up or down to how much is needed for breaking a full block off. Also, I'm doing this with hard maple. I've chosen as many boards as I can with a really nice, even, smooth grain of hard maple. Um, and all the blocks are hard maple. And one of the things I like about hard maple is it's not very porous. Um, so all of the glue doesn't have as much of a surface to contact with, and it's easier to shear it off. If I were to do it out of something like oak, there's a lot of pores in there for the glue to work into, and there's a better chance that the wood is going to fail before the glue. So in this case, I'll be able to test the glue far more than just the wood. Now, some people are going to be saying that some boards are weaker than others, and some are harder than others, and so that may cause a variance in my measurements. And that's what I'm finding. Some of the boards are weaker, but what I've done is I've actually spread out all of the glue tests. So on this board, I have one of every glue test on this board, and then on this board, I have one of every glue test on this board. And what I'm finding so far, and this is just in my preliminary, these are test boards that I created just to test the apparatus itself, is that... Um, probably somewhere around 65, 70, maybe 75% of the glue locations, the glue is completely shearing off. And it's only an occasional oddball where the wood is shearing. And some of those cases where the wood is shearing, that's because I don't have the frame on there tight enough. So as long as I make sure to keep the frame on there, I should be able to get a really good reading about what exactly is the glue shear strength, not what is the shear strength of the wood. Now, before we go any farther into the glues and I actually show you what all we're going to be testing, I do want to say um, this is a very expensive uh, process, and I want to say thank you to those on Patreon because you have really been helping me out with getting this done. And all told, I'm spending a little over $1,000 on glues, on lumber, on the testing supplies, and actually getting this up and going. And I'm hoping to do more of that in the future. So if you like this, definitely check out Patreon. I am not sponsored by anyone. Um, I don't have any sponsors in this, and this is all stuff that I've paid for so that I can have a completely unbiased response and not saying, ooh, Titebond paid me, and there's, uh, their glues really did well. <laughs> um, but yeah, that being said, let's actually dive in and take a look at these glues. Now, this is not a comprehensive list of all glues. Like, one that I want to do in the future is um, construction adhesive. This is the only piece of construction, the only type of construction adhesive I had on hand. Uh, Dynagrip, it's for foam board, so it's probably going to be a little weaker. In the future, I want to do other construction adhesives, and I'd love to hear your list of, is there any particular glue you want me to test in the future? Uh, but let me go through everything I have and why I have them here. Originally, I wanted to see what was the big difference between like old brown and a tight bond high glue and actual high glue. I mean, is it worth spending the time to even, you know, make my own high glue over using these high glues over just squeezing out the tight bond high glue? Um, is there really any strength or difference between them? And so I was just going to do a difference between high glue and like a 315. But then I thought, you know, I might as well do the others. And while I'm at that, I might as well throw in old brown and then I might make my own. Uh-oh, this is starting to get into something bigger. <laughs> so we're going to be doing um, tight bound high glue, um, old brown high glue, 315, 251, and 192 high glues, as well as the high glue I made myself, so you can see how those compare. So then we'll get into the tight bonds, and we're going to be using tight bond original, tight bond 2, which is usually what I use, and you know it's kind of the, the go-to glue, and then tight bond 3, which is usually preferred for exterior surfaces. So I'm kind of interested to see, you know, is tight bond 3 stronger than tight bond 2, or is it just better for exterior surfaces? Let's, we'll find out with that. Um, and then while we're at that, let's also look at white glue. So the tight bond white glue, and I've heard a lot of other people just using straight Elmer's glue. Um, we'll see how that does. I have no idea. 
And then we want to get into super glue. Now, one of the tricks that a lot of people do is they'll use a little bit of super glue and a little bit of wood glue. And so I'll put wood glue on most of it and then put a couple dabs of super glue just to hold it in place and let that set up. And one of the nice things about that is the super glue will hold the block in place until the wood glue cures. But are you going to actually lose any strength or is there any chemical in, in, in things that go on between the two? I want to see what happens when you mix those two. So the next up we have the cheap super glue. Now this is this is the super glue I bought at the dollar store and I bought a pack of tin for a buck. Um, it's dirt cheap junk stuff. I don't know if it's any good. Is there any difference between the cheap super glue and like uh, the 2P10 professional kit? And so I'm also going to be doing the 2P10 system. So we're going to be going through, uh, let's see, I have thin, um, I have the gel, and then I have the thick. I want to see what are the difference between those. And then I'm going to do all three of them again, also using the activator. You know, is there a difference with the activator? So there's going to be six tests with the 2P10 system, um, thin, thick, and gel, as well as thin, thick, and gel with the activator. Now, another thing I've heard a lot of is uh, you should use Gorilla Glue if you have a gap to fill. Uh, it expands and fills in the gap. Uh, is that any true? Does it become weaker? I have no idea. Um, so Gorilla Glue is in the list as well. And then the next thing I was told is I've got to try um, 5,200, uh, 5, 3M's uh, marine glue. And apparently this is supposed to be like the cat's pajama, the best stuff that you can possibly get your hands on. The only problem is it takes seven days to set. And so I had to leave it in clamps for seven days, which was a pain. Um, but uh, we got this on there, dried on. And so I'm really interested to see how that does. Um, is that really all that they crack it up to be? And it's supposed to be marine. So we'll see how that does outside as compared to the others as well. Then we're going to get into our epoxies. And for the epoxies, no, a lot of people use the West system. I'm going to be doing the West systems hard, uh, the fast and the slow and seeing if there's any difference between the two and actually get a comparison there. Then we're also going to be doing the East Coast resin. Um, I had a lot of people use this. It's a fairly cheap epoxy, but really easy to use. Uh, really nice and clear too, as well as the cheap five minute epoxy. This is the stuff that everyone's got in their garage. And, you know, is it any good? Is it cheap? Uh, I don't know. Is it going to hold up? We'll find out. Then, of course, I mentioned the construction adhesive earlier. In the future, I'd like to try others, but that's the only construction adhesive I had on hand. This is the DAP DynaGrip for foam board. Now, I know this isn't a wood glue, but I use it for putting on leather and a lot of other things. Um, barge, as well as a thinned barge, so you can actually get the, the thinner for it. Is there any difference with those? And then, of course, Super 77. Um, who knows how that's going to go? We'll, we'll find out that. And then uh, casing glue, the glue I made myself. Now here I made a big mistake. Oops, oh well. Um, I left this out uh, for about three days um, before actually doing the glue test. And um, when I opened it up, it smelled really bad. I forgot to put it back in the fridge. But I went ahead and used it rather than mixing up another set. Figured, yeah, three days, let's see how the difference is. Um, so far, um, I've had three blocks fall off before the test, so apparently when you leave this stuff off, it's bad. Um, so in the future, I'm probably going to have to do a whole new set of case and glue, as well as when I do the other uh, construction adhesives. But we'll see how much, uh, is there a difference between um, good case and glue and stuff that has been not so good. <laughs> so we'll see how that comes out. And then last but not least, this is one that I got a lot of requests from Europe and I had to order it over from, I think I ordered it from England and it's the uh, cast, I don't know how you pronounce it, caskamite. Um, it comes in a white powder, you mix it up and you put it in there. Now for all the glues, I have followed the directions on the bottle and container and uh, figured out exactly what to, I mean, even these ones that I, I didn't follow the salsa recipe. Um, I followed the, the glue of the, the, the preferred stuff from the factory for using my own um, glue. So I followed them all to a T and how long they should be clamped, um, how the surface should be prepared, and uh, we're really interested to see what is the difference between all of these glues. So let's actually talk about the tests. We're going to be doing four different tests. Uh, this particular one is gap filling. And here you can see how there is a gap in the back of the board. And what I've done is I've gone through with a round and I've cut that out. So basically the board is only touching the outsides here and leaving about a sixteenth of an inch gap across there. So we'll see how much the, the glue can actually bond between the two as opposed to just having a smooth. And uh, some of these I have long grain to long grain. So you just have the long grain surface to the board. Um, also, as another note, um, I didn't mention this earlier, all surfaces that the boards are attached to, either the main surface of the board or the block, have been planed smooth. They have not been sanded. So we have a planed surface attaching to a planed surface. I will also be doing end grain to long grain. And so you can here you see the exact same three, uh, three quarter inch by one inch blocks 
that are then ingrain glued into the, uh, the existing substrate board. I will also be doing a test of long grain to long grain exterior. And these ones have been sitting outside in the snow and in the rain, and they will be tested in a wet condition so that we can actually see what does the exterior have uh, to do with the wood itself. So this should be really interesting. I'd love to hear your feedback. Do you have any concerns about the test? Um, is there any glue you'd like me to do in the future? Um, or is there anything that you think I'm forgetting? Uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll either answer with, yes, I've addressed it this way, or no, I hadn't thought about that. Maybe I should do an adjustment. Um, so I'm really looking forward to diving into this and hopefully over this next week, I'm gonna be able to get through all 1,280 blocks and um, we will see how it all comes out. So yeah, this is gonna be interesting and I hope you like the outcome. Hopefully next Saturday, I will have the total results and I'll go through and say, you know, this glue really stood up and this glue was not what I expected and this one surprised me. I have no idea what to expect. I'd love to see your guesses. Leave them down below and uh, we'll see who comes closest. So uh, yes, this has been a lot of fun. I do wanna say thank you to those on the Wood by Right Hive Mind on Facebook. I've been bouncing a lot of ideas off of you as well as those on Patreon. Uh, thank you for that. Without Patreon, this would not happen. This has actually ended up costing me a little over $1,000 for the glues, the testing rig, the lumber, um, so it's not a cheap process to go through all this and it'll probably be more in the future. So thank you for that on Patreon. If you'd like to help out with Patreon, you can do more right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe, you can hit the button here or see some behind the scenes footage on the second channel. That's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.